I just got done replacing the cartridge. There's a plastic cartridge insert that goes in here. Uh, this is a Price Fister Avante. Uh, that center piece, the cartridge, was stuck in there and getting it out was difficult. Okay, so what you do, and there's other videos that show you how to do this and are probably much better at that, but this is the bezel, old bezel. Um, this is the knob. This cover plate goes on top of the knob. So you take a, a small screwdriver or something and lift, pry that off. The cover comes off and then you can see the screw in there. I'm calling it a bezel, so I'm calling it a cover plate. And um, it had this sticking out. Now, I've collapsed this because I had to use it to get the cartridge out. More about that later. Uh, some videos I've seen, this, uh, this unscrews. On mine, it was just a sleeve that went over it. So you take that off, you undo the two screws, this comes off. This was behind there. Um, these are the two screws. Save the two screws. You're going to need them if the cartridge is stuck in there. Okay, replacement. I got two, because uh, I have two bathrooms, but I'm only going to do the one here, because the other bathroom is not uh, leaking, and I don't want to take a chance on uh, messing it up. So all I did was went and got a new knob for the other bathroom. Uh, the knob was at uh, Lowe's. It's, uh, you probably can't see it in the video, but it's up here in the upper left. SH7430. It says for single handle faucets, tower, uh, tub shower handle for Price Fister, old style Avante. And it's a bushcraft. Bushcraft. And uh, I think it was like 12 bucks. Um, they make a puller. The only one that Home Depot and Lowe's had was this. Um, they had a one by Moen that looks the same or this cheaper one made by Danko but it says core puller for Moen. This does not work on this shower cartridge. Uh, it's totally different. You're going to need some tools. Uh, you need, this is a probably a 12 inch crescent. This is a 12 inch crescent. A 10 inch might work. I had an 8 inch and it isn't quite big enough. You need a pair of pliers. You need something small to, to get off this end cap on the knob so you can get access to the knob. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. And I use these channel locks as part of the gear puller thing that I used. Okay. Um, the trim kit. This uh, is at Home Depot. It says for Price Fister Avante Chrome. Um, it's a Parts Master Pro. It says FR7 in the bottom here. I don't know what that means. But the, the part number for Home Depot is 58468. 58468. This was uh, uh, $33, I think. It has the knob. It has the new bezel. It has the screws. And it has the cartridge on the back. And... Uh, Lowe's had one of these, but it didn't include the cartridge. So this is a pretty good deal for 33 bucks. Um, that one I'm going to take back because I'm not going to try to do mess with the other bathroom. I'm just going to replace the knob. So you don't need this puller. Uh, you might be able to get the old one out by just yanking on it. Here's the old one. It, these pieces fit on the, on the side. And uh, they flew off when I yanked it out. Uh, this is where the handle goes. This is the part that sticks in, into the wall. This is the part that gets stuck. These O-rings, whatever. It gets, you know, I don't know when this was last changed, but it was definitely stuck in there. So I tried screwing the handle back on the end. Uh, 
and using the handle to pull on this to try to pull it out. It wouldn't come. Uh, once you get the bezel off, then you're looking at this. And this is a collar, this silver metal piece. I don't know if you can tell it's silver, but that much of it is a collar and it threads into this piece, into the valve itself. And that's what holds this cartridge in place. So uh, you use a crescent wrench or you could use uh, like channel locks, but you're, you're liable to mess, uh, it won't hurt anything, but you're, you'd probably chew this up some because like I did, I was trying to use pliers first. Um, but a crescent wrench uh, would work, an uh, adjustable wrench, and it screws counterclockwise to take it off, and let me change hands on the camera. You would unscrew it this way, this way, like this, counterclockwise, and once this is off, it, of course you turn off the water before you do any of this. Once this uh, bezel is off, there was nothing else holding the cartridge in place. Um, I don't think I've seen any videos that showed any other clips or anything in there. So all you do, once you get the bezel off, um, you unscrew this thing, and it might be corroded. You unscrew this thing, and then you got to pull on the, on the cartridge and get it out of there. So mine wouldn't come. I put quite a bit of uh, force on it, and it's plastic, so I didn't want to, you know, really break it. Um, so what I devised was to take the old bezel piece, which is this, and it used to be round. It used to go right there. It used to be a round thing, that size. And the old screw from the bezel, the longer screw, and these channel locks, and I put this, just a minute, I don't have enough hands. I put the screw in the channel locks like that. And I took the old uh, piece of metal here that was on the bezel and collapsed it like that and uh, the screws inside there and that's what I used as a gear puller so if you have a big socket about that size uh, maybe like uh, this is an a inch and an eighth if maybe like an inch and a half it might be big enough to go around that but you need something that can work as a gear puller if that sucker ain't coming out of there now uh, in Trying to figure out what to do next once I got it backed out some. Also, uh, other videos people have used penetrating oil, some type of uh, uh, WD 40 maybe, but there's like 3 in 1 oil, I think, is a pen penetrating oil. But anyway, something in there, let it sit for a while, and then because it's the O rings and any uh, corrosion from the water being there forever um, that sticks it in there. Um, and uh, other, uh, I read on another website where they just yank it out as best they can and then pull the pieces. Uh, on one plumber's uh, forum, uh, a fellow suggested what you do is you take the original screw, this little short screw, the original screw, you put it, no knob, just the screw into the end. So your pliers have something to grab onto. And remember, this, this would be sticking out further. It'd be out about that far. And you put this screw in there, grab it with pliers, grab it with pliers on the end, and give it a couple of yanks. Push in a little bit, yank out. Push in a little bit, yank out. On the second yank, that worked this morning. Um, so if you've got one of these things that doesn't come out easily, um, good luck because it's tough. But that's what I did. Um, and then I went, I, like, uh, they suggested in some of the videos, uh, I got some, uh, 
silicon fat faucet grease. Uh, this was at Home Depot. I think it was like 370 just a little container of grease stuff. And I put it on all the threads. I put it on the old one. I mean, on the new one, I put it on the O-rings. There's an O-ring there and an O-ring there. And uh, then I put the new cartridge in. Now, one thing to note, this cartridge has a, um, a notch or a uh, tit that sticks up, a little plastic piece that sticks up. I don't know if you can see that, maybe. It sticks up, and on mine it was up on the top on the old one, so when I put in the new one, I put it up on top. If you reverse that, then it's going to go probably work the other way for hot and cold from what you're used to. So this notch, when you put the new one in, put the notch like the old one was originally. Now when I yanked that sucker out of there, these two pieces flew off. But you want to, uh, if, they, if everything doesn't come out when you take the old one out, you want to take a flashlight and maybe stick your finger in there and or stick your finger in there and make sure that <coughs> no pieces of it are still in there of the old one. Then you put the grease on the new one. You line up the notch. There's a notch in the top of this. I don't know if you can see that. Right there, there's a notch. And that's where that tit sticks in. Um, you know, the piece of plastic that sticks up. Because that orients this valve, this cartridge. Um, other than that, you just put it back in. Then you put some of that grease on the threads, both on the inside of the valve piece and on the outside of this uh, uh, metal, uh, I guess you'd call it a bezel that fit, that screws on. You screw it on clockwise and with your crescent wrench, tighten it up. That's what holds the cartridge in. Um, and then you're, it should work. And uh, turn your water on. I would suggest turn your water on before you put all the bezel stuff back on. Make sure there's no leaks. Okay, so here we are two days later. Um, this is still leaking out the head. The head would normally be up here. Um, so the cartridge, this is actually a second cartridge that I got from Lowe's, just the cartridge. But the cartridge that came with this bezel assembly from Home Depot did not work. It really leaked out of here. The second cartridge is better, but it's still leaking. So what I did was I looked online and I ended up buying, and I'm going to install in a few minutes, a cartridge from Price Pfister themselves, OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer Part. It's uh, 974292. Yes, 974292. If you can't see it, I can't see it. Uh, the two part and the part from Lowe's, just the cartridge uh, part number was SL1450, and it says for Price Fister up there. But this one was looked identical, the same marking as the one that came with the bezel from Home Depot in the kit. So neither of those two work. They both leak out the. Uh, shower head. This is the equipment uh, original part from the manufacturer so I'm hoping that it will work better. It's a little different on the end. You can see maybe in the video. Um, the end's a little bigger, maybe different material, but they they look very similar. Uh, the O-rings look to be the same size. So we're going to try it out and I'll let you know how it works. Oh, I wanted to say where I got this at. Um, I live in Santa Clara, and there just happened to be a plumbing supply place. I don't know if this camera is going to pick it up. It's uh, Conleff Plumbing Supply, 2301 Lafayette Street, Santa Clara, California. Zip is 95050. Telephone number 
988-8005. On their website is uh, the three W's dot conleff, C-O-N-L-E-F-F dot com. And the part came to $19.09. This part at Lowe's, I think, was $13. So there's not a big difference between the one that doesn't work and hopefully the one that does work. Okay, so it's about 10 minutes later. And I've replaced the cartridge with the one from Price Fister. And it's not leaking up here anymore, so that's good. I'm going to turn it on for the first time. Water comes out. I feel no leaks here. That was the original problem. Cold water now comes the test. Off. Okay, we'll let it set for a little bit. I'm hoping that that's just uh, water in the pipe that's dripping out. So I'll come back after about another 10 minutes. Check it. Okay, about an hour has gone by and I'm going to declare this fixed. There is no drip. It dripped a little bit once I've turned it off and I only have uh, used it once or twice so maybe when you use it a few times it'll work in better but uh, no drip. Dripped a little bit. I you know hit the pipe, knocked the water out, kind of stuck my finger up there, got the extra water that was kind of hanging around and it's been like that for an hour, so I'm uh, declaring this repaired. Uh, lesson learned, get the original manufacturer's part. A little more money, but uh, this is the third time I've taken that sucker out of there, although it pops right out now. Not a big deal, it's like 10 minutes to take it apart and put it back together again. So I'm gonna put it back together, and unless there's a problem, if there's a problem, I'll put it in the notes below this video. Otherwise, this is fixed. And uh, best of luck to anyone that has to do this themselves. Uh, another tip that I'd like to say, um, this is called Barkeeper's Friend. Uh, it's a, this size, uh, 15 ounce, was $1.50 at uh, Home Depot. It comes in a can kind of like Comet Cleanser does. Um, this back bathroom especially, the cleaning people had hit this floor three times with a, a bleach uh, cleaner and I did it twice with the uh, white vinegar and uh, baking soda and it really did not take off the stains. Um, generally it's a white um, fiberglass shower floor and it's still a little dirty. It still shows a little bit of dirt. I'm going to hit it another couple of times with this stuff. But um, there were stains. Now this here is from hard water. That probably is not going to come out. Um, but I will uh, try uh, again. But I had stains coming you know, towards the drain along here. You can kind of see a faint thing. Um, so what you do is you sprinkle this stuff on and then you get it wet. Um, some of the um, videos, uh, cleaning video that I watched, uh, they put it on a, a sponge first and then use the sponge to put it on. I just sprinkled it on here and then used a stiff brush uh, to kind of lather it up. I let it sit a little while and then I rinsed it off. Uh, this is two applications of this stuff. Now this is very caustic. So uh, I'd use gloves. I wasn't using gloves, so my hands tingled uh, the rest of the night. Um, and I would not leave this on for very long in the beginning. Maybe a minute-ish. And if it doesn't work, then leave it on a little longer. The second application here, I left it on about three minutes or so. Um, but it really cleaned it. I mean, this is a big difference from the way it was. It looked really ugly. So if you're having trouble cleaning your 
uh, bathtub, shower. Uh, actually, this works for all kinds of stuff. I'm going to try it on my back patio on the cement. I've got some rust stains on there from a previous owner that uh, had a planter outside. Um, so this is just kind of a general cleaner. Uh, it's, uh, I've seen a video where they showed uh, cleaning uh, pots and pans really clean with this. So um, barkeeper's friend, very inexpensive and really works. Just be careful, at least in the beginning. Try a little bit, don't leave it on very long, and then go from there.